Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to a special video edition of the Atomic Timekeeping Podcast. This time around, I want to talk about a clock that I've been fond of, oh, for about 30 years now. I'm talking about the Electric Wonder Ball Clock. I first saw one and, and got one, I think, as a birthday gift. Uh, about 1978, 1979, somewhere in there. And uh, what you're looking at right now, actually, is uh, basically the same design, but something that was sold more recently and has been slightly modified from that original electric wonder ball clock that I got so long ago. This one's called the Time Machine. And once every minute, it drops a little chrome ball on the top rail of its mechanism, as you can see here. Now, if you want to know what time it is by looking at this clock, you look at the rails here that are holding the balls. The bottom rail indicates that it's 11 o'clock. The middle rail indicates that it's 15 minutes past the hour, and the very top rail adds a couple more balls, and eventually we see three more balls. So add that to the 15, and you get 18 minutes past 11 o'clock. That's the time displayed right now on this ball clock. This clock keeps time by dropping one ball every minute on the top rail. It picks them up from the bottom rail, as you can see here. Now let's take a look at the action of this rotating arm that takes a ball once per minute, carries it right to the top and drops it, and then comes right back down to rest at the bottom position to wait for its next movement a minute later. And here's what that looks like as it goes from indicating 11.19 to 11.20. As you can see, the fifth ball that landed on the top rail tripped the balance and actually went down its own little ramp and dropped down to the next rail down. So now we have 11.20. Now let's just take a look ahead and see what it looks like when this clock transitions from 11.59 to 12 o'clock. This ball that is dropped at the top uh, trips the balance on the top rail and also on the next rail down. And then the ball itself that started on top comes to rest on the bottom rail, indicating now it's 12 o'clock and zero minutes. Now maybe you noticed that the balls that uh, came off of the middle rail were kept from falling all the way down to the bottom rail again. Uh, there's a little lever that holds them back and makes them wait a minute before they actually drop all the way down to the bottom rail to be put in rotation to be picked up again. And there you see what happens when they're finally allowed to fall all the way down to the bottom again. The reason the balls have to be held back on that middle rail is that twice a day at 1 o'clock, all the balls are reset and drop out of those rails down back to the bottom again. And if the balls in the middle rail went down to the very bottom ramp at the same time that the balls from the bottom rail went down there, uh, they'd get jammed up. So let me show you what that would look like if I were to lift that little lever and allow all of those balls to fall down at the same time uncontrolled. Oh, there you go, a little traffic jam of the ball bearings down at the bottom. And that would eventually cause a problem where when the arm would go around looking for another ball to pick up and drop on the top rail, it would run out of balls because all the ball bearings would have been uh, stuck in that little traffic jam. Now, kids seem to get a big kick out of this clock, and of course one of the things they like to watch the most is when it does that full reset from 12.59 to 1 o'clock. looks something like this. The ball that was dropped on the very top rail makes its way to the middle rail and then all the way to the bottom rail, resetting each rail as it goes until, well, at the bottom you have uh, just one ball left, the ball that marks the one o'clock hour. That ball there in the one o'clock position is uh, fixed in place so it doesn't roll off of that rail at all because on a clock like this it's never going to be less than one o'clock. And now we see that it's 101 on this clock. Just for the sake of balancing these rails, there are two uh, black balls that are not as shiny off on the ends of the very top rail and the middle rail. 
Those balls are not next to any number indicators, and so mm, they don't mean anything. They're just there to help the balance and uh, make the mechanism work correctly. And now you see it's 102. Now can you guess what time this is? I'll give you a moment. Yes, it's 5.30. Okay, Star Wars fans, now what time is it? That's right, my friends, it's 11.38. And now, what time is that? The bottom rail showing six hours, the middle rail, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 minutes, plus four on the top, so it's 6.29. And now let's watch the transition from 6.29 to 6.30. The battery-powered version of this clock has a regular quartz movement that ticks every second, somewhat like you're used to seeing on your regular quartz movement clocks around the house. When this indicator reaches zero seconds, it trips a little relay that causes that arm motor to spin around one revolution, dropping a ball on the top rail as it goes. The clock is battery powered, so let's take a little peek at where those batteries are. And there's a battery uh, cover, and then it runs on four C cells uh, down inside that are located in the back of the clock. Those C cell batteries will last about four months in regular use, which doesn't seem like uh, a lot of time. You'd re really usually hope for longer battery life than that. But if you'd like to, you can buy your own AC to DC adapter and plug it into the back of the clock right here, as indicated. This is the very first ball clock that I got back in the late 1970s. It was a kit. I had to assemble all the rails myself. Uh, but once you got it put together, you know, then you could just watch it for hours and days and have fun watching the clock go. This particular model, well, uh, after a few years, the motor went bad, and I had to get a new motor. Unfortunately, these clocks are novelty clocks. They're not necessarily built to last. This clock does work today with the motor that I installed a few years ago. And uh, this motor, being AC-powered, runs at one revolution per minute. Here you see it next to the more up-to-date version of the clock. So the very first one that's about 30 years old and the other one that's uh, just a few months old. Right there running neck and neck with each other. Also in the middle there in the 1990s I purchased a clock uh, that, well, it's still the same basic design. But this motor wasn't so robust as the, even the one that I had uh, back in the late 1970s. So the one you're seeing there in the middle uh, foreground, actually the motor is bad on that clock and it runs a little bit slower than it should. But I still have it, just in case someday someone can help me to fix the motor on that 1990s version of the clock. Now, of course, they recommend that you run these clocks with the clear plastic cover in place couple reasons for that. It's a very noisy clock, so the plastic cover does reduce noise just a little bit. And also, if something were to happen and one of the balls were to fall off of the rail and down into the bottom portion of the clock, um, well, you want to have the cover on there so that the ball doesn't roll away and get lost and get sucked up by the vacuum cleaner or something like that. So uh, try to keep those covers on. Keep dust out of the clock and just help it run better. You don't get dirt and stuff in the rails there and start gumming up the works. You find these clocks for ooh, somewhere between 40 and $50 in novelty and toy catalogs. And again, it might be a fun thing to get, but uh, just be aware that it's noisy. <laughs> I think it has a 45-day warranty. So uh, that tells you right there, be on your toes, keep a close eye on it. And uh, if there are troubles in those first 45 days, uh, get right on top of that and uh, get it replaced. But uh, unfortunately, I guess the 45-day warranty means that, uh, well, perhaps the manufacturer doesn't have a lot of confidence in, uh, in its own product. And that's too bad, because it is a fun clock to have. I wish they would just put a better motor in there and uh, go ahead and uh, make it more robust, make it built to last. 